Patrick, I want to talk about another important investment concept this morning, which is benchmarking. But before we do that, help us understand how we arrived at this point. Sure, there's been a natural progression. We started with the concept of what is a market, a place where buyers and sellers meet to do business mm -hmm. and to make transactions. And then we moved on as a natural progression from that right into indexes. Mm -hmm. And indexes are a measure of that market. Mm -hmm. and, and so benchmarking is then the process of knowing what's happening out there in markets, measuring that through indexes, and then comparing your own portfolio portfolios to those markets. That's a great description of it. And I think, you know, that's an that's an something that is often oversimplified, mm -hmm. but requires a little bit of skill. Um, you know, the blended portfolios mm -hmm. have a lot of different things in them. US stocks of different kinds, international stocks of different kinds. And there are indexes to correspond with each of these different we're called asset classes, different sure. pieces of those pies. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be careful, I guess, to make sure that we're doing the right comparisons. Absolutely. And I think that's important. I think a, a client will want us to use the appropriate indexes against the appropriate asset classes to benchmark that portion of their portfolio. And really what I feel from them is that they want to know that they're doing about right. Yeah, you're getting into it, which is why. Why are we bothering to do this? Yeah. So what's the value? A benchmarking at all, at all. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Is to make sure that uh, you are uh, that you're getting the right type of performance in the right asset classes, um, and that you're not wildly underperforming. Yeah, I think that's you bring up a great point. As we talked about this earlier in preparation for this, mm -hmm. um, you know, well, it's nice, uh, and certainly we want certain parts of our portfolios to do better than the general market. Mm -hmm. I think the concern that a lot of investors have is that they they don't want to drastically underperform when when you're when you're attempting to you know compare you a part of your portfolio to a certain index a certain segment of the market you know if that piece did say 10 percent over a year mm -hmm. and you did four percent you might want to look at that mm -hmm. um, absolutely as a, as a measure of underperformance and figure out why that is so it, one of the things i know you've talked about before mike is you, you've talked about uh, a situation where a client calls and they reference an index and they want to use that index to benchmark their entire portfolio. Yeah. Uh, elaborate okay. on that. If you want to try to figure out how your portfolio is doing, it's important to make sure that you're doing that correctly. Mm -hmm. And so again, I referenced it before and I want to drive it home now. You know, m most portfolios, our clients at least, have a lot of different things, um, uh, you know, in them. U.S. stocks of different kinds, and uh, developed markets, international markets, um, emerging markets, bonds of different kinds, commodities and real estate. And if we were gonna put, compare, you know, say use the Dow Jones or the S&P 500, mm -hmm. which are indexes for the US stock market, if we were gonna use that to compare the other half of our portfolio that has nothing to do with US stocks, we're really missing important information there. Um, one of the things I wanted to add to that is that we can certainly guide them because there are so many different indexes that really doing a good job at benchmarking can be a little bit of an undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, so we can certainly guide them in that. The other thing that I wanted to, to, to elaborate on that I see frequently is if I'm talking to the same client one month and the next and the next and the next, we might that client might reference benchmarks in every single month. Yeah, and that's the frequency. The is. frequency, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a lot like if I were to walk up to your doorstep um, every month or even every day and say, Mike, I'm going to give you $200,000 for your house today. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, yeah, 205000 And then a few days from now, I'll give you 175000 Right. And that might cause uh, more concern. So the frequency with which you do this, I think, is um, it, it's important to take that into consideration. Yeah. I, I guess what's the overall takeaway here that we want uh, for our clients or anybody with regard to benchmarking? Well, I think w what I've heard from you is that we want to make sure that benchmarking is done right, mm -hmm. that, it can, that it can be used as a very useful tool to really measure uh, the performance and the outcomes uh, compared to the desired performance and outcomes, but it needs to be done in the right way. Yeah, and I, I think I would even take that one step further um, and to remember that when we're doing planning for somebody, when, we're, when we rec make an investment recommendation, it's to meet their specific goal. 
Absolutely. Um, and so if we're a cheat, if we're planning around a certain uh, return, investment return, mm -hmm. um, yes, it's good to know relative performance of other things, but at the end of the day, it's whether or not that investment is doing what it needs to do for that client's particular situation.